all our missionaries, this BGMC goes toward our missionaries where they can uh, use it to buy uh, different things they need. I'm not going to try to go through everything. My mind's blank right now. But uh, this time, let's go ahead and pray for them. And uh, you want to do it, Pastor? Sure. Father, we love you. We thank you for an opportunity to give again. And Lord, just to give into your work and to sow in. The, the, the things of the kingdom into other nations. And Lord, I just pray that you bless these boys and girls as they learn about missions and, and uh, Lord, participate in, in receiving this offering. So, Father, we ask your blessings on it now, and uh, we're going to give you great praise. Amen. In Jesus' name. Everybody, look around and tell your neighbor, hey, I'm excited about going to church today. All right, kids, are y'all ready? How, you know, how big is God? He's a big God, and how big is that devil? The little bitty devil. Great big God, little bitty devil. Hit it. Go ahead, kids. How big is God? Omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent God. Yeah, those are good words. Give them a big hand. Glory to God. All right. Now, guys, just want to want to remind y'all we're not going to stop and receive an offering. It during worship, we got how many of you know giving is an act of worship. So we have uh, we have offering baskets in the front and some in the back back there for you to to bring your offering to the Lord as an act of worship. Amen. 
Why don't you stand to your feet with us this morning? Um, we're going to do a couple of things today. I, I shared with the praise team. I was I woke up this morning just meditating and just I heard I heard Brother Clinton and saying it in my ear. You can't worship a God that you've ignored all week. And I, I shared with the team this morning. I said, you know, uh, going to be going to be reading a scripture here today out of Acts chapter three. It says that that you know if if we'll repent then times of refreshing will come from the Lord. How many of you could stand a little refreshing today? Amen. Amen. Then, then what precedes the refreshing is the repentance. Amen. Is that right? Yes, sir. So, you know, as, as we start this service out, I'm going to ask, I, I need some prayer warriors to come up there and just to repent on behalf of this nation. I, I, I want to see revival hit this nation. Amen. Folks, somebody's going to have to lead it out. If God's going to touch America, he's not going to send angels down here to do the job. Amen. Come on, can I get a witness? Amen. He's, going to, he's going to send you. He's going to send me. Amen. So we've got, we got to give him something to work with. Amen. Uh, we, have, we have several, but I'll, before we, we start officially, uh, I want to pray with Sharon. Go ahead, keep playing. You're good. Sharon uh, Laughlin is at Galveston UTMB, and I think I read this morning on Facebook that, uh, that, that she goes septic. Okay, I, I thought I, I read that. So Sharon, if you're watching, we're praying for you this morning. Gloria still needs a, a, a miracle from God just to touch her body. Uh, Ricky Orchard's brother, Clarence, uh, had, had brain surgery, and they're trying to make some very serious decisions uh, about what they're going to do with, uh, for Clarence. And then we got Eddie and Daryl Freeman. Eddie, as you remember, broke his hip. Daryl just still needs God to move in. And how many of you just lift your hand and say, Pastor, I know some folks that need prayer. Amen. Amen. How many of you know that God is a, a prayer answering God? Amen. Well, I want us to do this. Just take the hand of a neighbor right now. Amen. And I want us to take these. If, if you know, guys, I read these names out. I know some of you are watching this morning. This is the church, and we're praying for you today. Amen. Father, we just thank you right now. Lord, I thank you for the privilege of, of the opportunity, Lord, to, to stand in the gap and to pray for men and women. Lord, who who've, they, they've sent out message. They've sent out word. They need prayer. They're sick. Father God, the Orchard family is going through a, a really rough time, a dark time right now. Lord, would you just come and just breathe life into that situation? Father, we rebuke infection and and Lord, a, a spirit of infirmity. And, and Lord, we thank you for a speedy healing. But Lord, most of all, we're asking you to let your glory fill this earth. Let your glory. Come on, church, pray. Let your God get glory out of healing. Get glory out of stepping in. And when the doctors have given up, Lord, you step in and you do something so extreme, so marvelous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, show up here today. Show up in a mighty way, Lord Jesus. Minister life. Minister grace. Minister health. In the mighty, mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Lord, there's no weapon formed against us going to prosper. And we're going to see the hand of the Lord moving in this land of the living. Lord, do what only you can do. Do what only you can do, Master. I bind principalities and powers that are, that are, that are affecting things on this earth. Lord, you've given us authority over things in this earth. And we take that authority right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. We say, devil, no more. Take your hands off of my family. Take your hands off of my family. Take your hands off of my family, devil. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command you, take your hands off. Your lies, your tricks, your traps. In the name of Jesus, we bind it. And Father God, we release a flow of your anointing into these situations to bring healing, to bring salvation, to bring deliverance, to bring restoration in the precious name of Jesus. Now, Father God, we repent right now as your people. We repent. Come on. Father God, forgive me. Forgive me for what I've done. Lord, ignoring you. Lord, being selfish. Father, setting you aside and then expecting you just to, to, to jump up out of that out of that box when I turn the handle. Oh God. Help us to have a fear of you again. A respect, an awe, a reverence for who you are, Jesus. Oh, my God, my God, we praise you. Come on, church. 
Now pray for that one you're holding in your hand right now. Lord, open the windows of heaven over them right now. And pour out blessing. Pour out blessing, Lord. Pour out blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stir up the gifts that are in them today, Lord. Stir it up. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And somebody just give the Lord a big clap offering. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on. Turn around and tell your neighbor to get ready. God's about to do something. Hallelujah. I'm going to turn this one off in just a second. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. Now, check two. I asked I ask earlier, and I'm going to ask again. If I can have some folks just come stand in this, or kneel at this altar here, and just, and just pray, just intercede, repent. Amen. Folks, our nation's in a mess. Come on, are you listening to me today? I said our nation's in a mess. And if the church doesn't stand in the gap, the Word of God says that God is looking. He said, I, you know, he looked around. He saw all this that was coming against the people of Israel. And he says, I sought for a man who would stand in the gap and build up the hedge. But I didn't find one. Come on, can we give him, can we give him some folks this morning that will stand in the gap? Amen. If you're back there in your pew, just lift your hand to heaven and say, Father, I pray for my nation right now. And Lord, I ask you to turn the tide, to turn the tide of darkness upon this land. And Father God, let the light of your glory fill this earth one more time. Lord, I pray that you'll forgive us as the church for not fulfilling our role. Lord, as the gatekeepers, we've, we've let, let our guard down and we've allowed the in, enemy to come in to this nation. But Father, I, I see that you're awakening your people even now. There's an awakening coming. And Holy Spirit, we just we want to report for duty right now, Lord. We're going to stand in the gap for this land. Lord, the spirit of death that is rising up. Oh, God, yeah, that's, a, that's a mark that hell is at work. But, Lord, you said the enemies come to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I came, I came, I came that they might have life. Thank you for giving life today, Jesus. Come on, just bless him. Yeah. When the music fades and all is stripped away, and I simply come, hallelujah, longing just to bring something that's a word. That would bless your heart. Sing it again. When the music fades and all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's worth that would bless your heart. I'll bring, I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required, no, you search much deeper within, through the way things appear, you're looking into
when it's all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm coming, I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for the thing I've made it when it's all about you it's all about you, Jesus. Yes, Father. Hallelujah. Yes, King of endless world, no one could express, express how much you, you deserve. No one we can hold, and all I have is yours. Every single breath I'll bring you more than a song Or a song in itself It's not what you have required oh, Hallelujah, break our hearts, Jesus You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it. But it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Because it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it. But it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. King of endless worlds, no one could express. How much you deserve The one we can hold All I have is yours Every single breath I'll bring it I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself And the one you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart yeah. I'm coming back to the heart of worship But it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the It's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it, but it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'll bring you more than a song. Bring you more than a song. Bring you more than a song. I'll bring you more than a song. Bring you more than a song. I'll bring you more than a song. Bring you more than a song. I'll bring you more than a song. Bring you more than a song. 
I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it, but it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on. Come on, just bless the Lord. Just worship him. Worship him. Come on, church. Oh, God, you're so good. You're so good. You're so good. You're so good. I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. All about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, as the pastor called us this morning to uh, come and pray for our nation, as I stepped out and I started walking to the front and I, I looked at the altar and I saw the men coming down and, and kneeling at the altar, as I knelt there, the, the Lord started speaking to me. The reason this country is in the shape that it's in today is because of the shape that the church is in. He's wanting to put things in order, but there's a place where he needs to start. And he needs to start in the hearts of man. Because we have relinquished the position that he has put us into. He wants to set things in this church right, but in order to do that, he has to start in our homes. Men, we have got to turn our hearts back to God, and we have got to step in the position that we have relinquished to the enemy and take control of these things. And as things start to take control in our homes, then things will start to fall in place and in order in the church. But he's calling you out this morning because he needs to start with you. He needs for you to step up and be the spiritual leader that he's called each and every one of us to be. So he's calling you this morning to come down and take your place, to repent for giving up, for not standing in the gap where we should be standing. We leave it up to our wives to dictate the spiritual atmosphere in our homes when it should be on us. So he's calling you this morning. Yes, hallelujah. Come on, somebody just pray, Lord, start it with me. Start with me, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. This morning, we, as a worship team, before we begin to practice, we just, we prayed and we, we spent our time repenting and because we, listen, what we do here is a prophetic act. You know, it's not just, we're not just up here singing songs, but we're, we're creating an atmosphere, a platform, if you will, for, for the Lord to come dwell in and to do his work. Amen. So I want you to see, and I, I meant to say this to the team later, but I'm saying it to the team now, but I'm saying it to you as well. Hallelujah. What, what you're doing right here is not just singing a song. You hear me? We're, 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 we're singing into that, into that spirit realm. You do know, you do know there's a whole world up above your head. And there's, and there's angels and there's demons. Just play it. There's angels and there's demons and, there, and there's activity going on all around you. And the, there's only two things that affect that, re, that region right there. I, I guess actually three. One is a prophetic declaration of God's word. Two is the prayers of the saint. And three is your worship. That with worship and prayer and praise, amen, declaring the word of God, we can affect things and we are affecting things in that, re, in that spirit realm. We're not fighting against flesh and blood, y'all. Come on, the, this world is just doing what the world does. I said the world is doing what the world does. It's time for the church to do what the church does. Why are y'all looking at me? I said it's time for the church to do what the church does. It's time for you to begin to prophesy. It's time for you to begin to pray. It's time for you to begin to, uh, to, to, to penetrate the darkness 
and to become the, the, the sons and the daughters of God that you are destined to become. Amen. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Sing it again. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was brought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was brought with the precious blood of jesus christ oh come to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was brought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Come on. Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. down before him for he is Lord of all sing hallelujah Christ is risen we're going to do it again oh what a savior isn't he wonderful sing hallelujah For him, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen, yeah. Come on, just bless him. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Right oh, come to the, the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness 
was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of yes. Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus. Come on, just bless him. Just love on him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my God. Thank you, Lord.
Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Let, let heaven and earth hear you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Blow it. Come on, come on. Come on, just bless the Lord. Praise will steal, will quiet that avenger. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. serve a great God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, I just ask you today, Lord, let this be a day of restoration. Lord, let this be the day where Joel's prophecy is fulfilled in our lives as individuals and corporately. That, Father, you are restoring the years that the canker worm is devoured, the palmer worm is eaten. Father God, that everything that, that has, has been sent against us, Lord, is, has, has caused to, to break down some things in our lives so that we can only look to you for help. Lord, I pray for that one here this morning that has been looking right and left and, and all around and can't find hope anywhere. Oh, let them find it today in you, Master. Let them look to you and live. Let them look to you and live. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Lord, we look to that tree of life that became a cross. (laughs) Hallelujah. Mm. That the cross is the tree of life restored. We can look to you today, Jesus, and live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Guys, put up there, if you will, Hebrews 13. We're going to start in verse 18. I want you, I want to just, the purpose today is to get our eyes on, fixed on Jesus Christ. The purpose today is that your vision would not be caught up with anything other than Him, y'all. 
You hear me? Nothing else is, is important. Nothing is as important as focusing our, our eyes and our gaze on Jesus. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else. Hebrews eleven eighteen. I'm sorry, I said 13. I was wrong. Hebrews eleven eighteen. 18, my bad. Hallelujah. Hebrews eleven eighteen. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. From whence also he received him from the dead in a figure. Huh. How many of you have some dead things in your life right now? This is a word for, from heaven for you. That if you will just mix faith into that situation, if you'll bring Jesus Christ into the middle of this, if you'll begin to believe that God can even raise that thing from the dead, that ain't in my notes, but that's, that's, that, is, that is a word for, for somebody in this house today. I think a lot of somebodies. That thing is dead. God is challenging you. He wants some, something from you today. He's just show me a little faith. Show me some faith here. Give me something to work with. If you will provide the faith, God will provide the answer. Abraham obeyed, led his son up to that mountain. Friends, according to that verse right there, he had every intention on taking that knife and sticking it in his promise. But it says right here, he knew that if that was going to happen, God was going to raise him from the dead. That's going a little beyond your ability and my ability right here. I'm not looking at folk that have that, that kind of faith yet. I prophesy to you, I said not yet. Not yet. But if we'll get a hold of God and believe that He is God and that He honors His Word. Because folks, Abraham had that faith without any Jesus culture songs. He had that faith without that King James New Testament. Come on, y'all. All he had was a walk with God. He had an ear that could hear the calling of God, the deep of God calling to the deep of his soul, and he responded to that call. How, how does a man or a woman get there? He'd been carrying that promise for 25 years before it ever came. God had come to him time and again. How many times... Come on, has God come to you and reassured you that you, He has not left you yet? Can, am I talking to anybody? He's let you know, I ain't left you. If there's any distance between me and you, that's because you move, not me. He ain't never left you. He's never not, fit, not come through on a word that He's given you. You moved your position and obligated Him just to stand there and wait for you to line back up. I'm speaking life today to dead things. I speak life to dead dreams. I speak life to dead vision. I speak life to dead marriages. I speak life to dead relationships. I speak life to a faith that was there but has fallen. I speak life to every dead thing in this house. I speak life. 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 Life! If there's something dead in you, it ain't God's fault. The devil has come to steal, kill, and to destroy. Jesus came to speak life. My God, my God, my God. Somebody! That spot... Where he was going to sacrifice his only son. Mount Moriah. Little, little Isaac said. Papa. 
I see the wood and I see the fire. Where's that sacrifice? Abraham, not knowing, just because, listen, what I said earlier, as we worship, we are producing things in that spirit realm that is unlocking a prophetic de declaration into this earth. Do you see that? Abraham simply obeyed God and marched up that mountain. And, and when, when his boy asked the question, Abraham was not speaking of himself. That was, that was a word from heaven. He said, son, God will provide himself a sacrifice. Now, temporarily, that was partially fulfilled when he saw the ram caught in the bush. And he slaughtered the ram rather than his son. But prophetically, Abraham was talking about a hill called Calvary that's right there on that same mountain. God did provide that sacrifice. And it was another only son. But it wasn't Isaac. It was the son of the living God. Come on, y'all. Come on. And this prophetic declaration put things in motion. I'm telling you, your obedience is going to produce something in your life that cannot happen any other way. But here's the thing. It also is going to produce something in this earth that is not going to come without your obedience. There's somebody in this community that needs you to function into your gift. It's not, it's, it's not just about you getting your mad on, puffing up. Come on. This world needs you. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to you now. This world needs you to quit playing games. And to be serious about your obedience to the Father. Oh. Now, now Jesus would have come to earth if Abraham had failed that test. He'd have died on that cross. But oh, what we would have missed if Abraham's obedience had not been full. Wow. Go ahead and take that. That's yours. It ain't in them notes. Mm. Mm. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both of the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning on the top of his staff. There's two hours of preaching right there. That little phrase leaning on top of his staff. Oh, what a story. He was able to bless his boys because he got hold of God and wouldn't let go. My God. Okay, I'm going to preach. Forget the notes. <laughs> he, listen, the story. He's wrestling with, with a man who was Jesus, the incarnate, pre-incarnate Christ. He's wrestling with this man. I'm not going to let you go till you bless me. <laughs> as, as, as whatever your name is said, <laughs> as Jerry said, that the slaves can't deliver slaves. There's a, there's a B part to that. Amen. Empty people can't fill nobody's, nobody up. But only a blessed people can pronounce a blessing upon their progeny. Only a blessed father can bless his sons and daughters. Only a blessed mother can bless his son, her sons and her daughters. Only a blessed people can be a blessing in this community. And I'm here. To let heaven and the devil know I am a blessed man of God. And my sons and my daughters are living in the blessing that I'm, this community is blessed because you're here. 
him leaning on that staff reaches back to when the angel finally had to touch it and dislocate his hip and he walked with a limp the rest of his life. The other thing, and I'm not preaching it, I just want to just give you a little tag here. The rest of it. That, that, that the, the, the man's staff was, was, had his family history in it. He would, he would mark in the staff crucial events that happened. If you get a, got old Abraham's staff, you would probably see that it, he, his boyhood experiences maybe. Oh, but there was a big line when God said, leave your father's house and go to a land. Amen. I believe there was a ring right there all the way. All of the rest of that meant nothing. God's doing a new thing in me today, my God. And I'm going to walk in obedience. I don't know where I'm going. And I don't know how it's going to end up. But I hear him calling me on a journey. So I'm going to follow him. All the way up that staff when uh, there's when, 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 when God told him, said, uh, you think I need to share with this young man what I'm about to do in Sodom and Gomorrah? Mm. Here's that man. Every encounter that he had with God was on that staff. And when he blessed his boys, he's leaning on the top of it. I mean, there's nothing else to be written. Everything. Every, my entire life. Whew. I want to get to my, the end of my life and say, I've walked with God. I've walked with God. I've been faithful. I haven't been perfect, but I've been faithful to this God. I've loved, I, I've loved the lover of my soul. Hallelujah. Where's my, I love my wife. Yes, I do. And she loves me. I got so angry at that woman when she told me, that she loved God more than she loved me. I was jealous of God. I got mad. I remember exactly where I was in that truck driving down the road that day. She, I, oh, I was furious. How could you love God more than me? I don't love nobody more than you. Honey. <laughs> I love you, baby. Oh, but I love Jesus. I love, I love the lover of my soul. <laughs> All right, let's just read the book. Dear God, I got a story I want to tell you. Uh, by faith, Joseph, when he died, he made mention of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. Don't leave me in Egypt. <laughs> even, even, though I, even though they may be turning to dust, don't leave them bones here. Lord, I ain't never preached that, but I can hear the, that sermon title. <laughs> Woo. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw that he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Hmm. Hmm. I, I done lost my place. Well, that, that, that's really not where I... That, that must have been all Holy Ghost, because that's where I was supposed to end, not where I was supposed to start. <laughs> Whew! Why, why, don't you, why don't you back up? <laughs> uh, Lord, where it? I was going to end up there. Okay. Verse 14. No, 13. Verse 13. These all, it's talking about them too, died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them, and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of the country where, from where they came out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better country, that is a heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. I want you to look back one more time, that 15th verse. And truly, if they had been mindful, say mindful. If they'd been mindful of that country that they, from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. I want to ask you today, what are you minding? What are, you, what are you thinking about? What are you minding? What, what, what's got a hold of your attention in your mind? To be mindful of that thing is to, 
is to think longingly about it. How many of you ever heard somebody talk about, give their testimony, sound like they, they talked about their life and sin so much that they actually enjoyed it? it, it it'd be kind of like your, you know, men, men, your, your wife telling a story and she gets to talking about, you know, it, part of the story is one of her old boyfriends. And when she starts talking about it, she just kind of gets this faraway look in her eye. That ain't right. Now, I said that from, from the woman's perspective because usually that would be the man doing that. But I just, you know, I thought I'd give the guys an, uh, a break today. Well, to be mindful is that kind of thing. That if, if, if it's what the children of Israel did when they were thinking back, oh, I remember the leeks that we had, the onions in, in Egypt. It is, it is looking back. It's what cost uh, uh, Lot's wife. Because, because it's not that she looked back, but that her heart went back. Her longing, her desire. What are you minding today? I want him. Sometimes it's good to look back, but, but only, only so that we can get an idea of how far he's brought us. Well, this, this, this story came to me. I hadn't thought about this in 100 years. We were pastoring the little mission church in Troy, Texas, and we lived in a little farmhouse on the side of the interstate, Interstate 35 between Waco and Austin. A lot of, a lot of traffic up and down that road. and we, uh, There was a little detached garage little one-car garage, had, had a room off to the side of it. Uh, you know, it was at, at one time it was a pole barn. You could tell that because they, you could see where they'd come in later after they built it and poured a little concrete so that they could pull their car on top of concrete and not dirt. And, uh, you know, but, but at one time it had a dirt floor. There was black tar paper parts, partially on the inside of the walls exposed, and it had a little room, like I said, off to the side where somebody might have stayed there at one time. On the walls inside the garage, you could see where little kids had taken chalk and stuff, and they'd scratched on the walls, and I never gave it any mind. I thought it was just kids playing, and one day, I was at the church, and my wife was uh, working in the kitchen, and a beautiful white Mercedes Benz pulled up in the driveway. Now, you got to understand, we didn't know anybody drove a Mercedes Benz. They sure didn't go to our church, <laughs> and so this... This, this Mercedes pulls up in, and this, this beautiful Hispanic family gets out, and he's decked out, got gold and, and, and rings and fine clothes. And I, Tammy didn't say this, but I wrote it down. I'm sure she thought somebody's coming to bless us. <laughs> when my wife opened the door, he introduced himself and began to tell her this story. When he was, a chi he was the child of an immigrant family, and they would follow the cotton harvest around, and he and his brothers and sisters and parents would pick cotton in the field. And <clears throat> during those times, they lived in that little garage. But it didn't, that was before it had a cement floor. It was just a dirt floor. And they would hang a tarp up over the, because the, 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 there was no garage door, they would hang a tarp up over that for a little privacy. And they had a wash tub that they would take baths in, and when nobody was bathing, they'd flip it upside down, put a board on it, and that was their dining room table. That was this man's life. And the scratching on the wall, that was them keeping account how many sacks of cotton. That, 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 was, that was their books, their ledger. They would keep account how many sacks of cotton they would pick, and the kids would write down there how, how much they'd pick. This man, very, he had gone on to become a very successful businessman down in the valley, obviously driving a Mercedes and got all the fineries. When he got out of that car, he grabbed his teenage sons and he took them by the hand and he wanted them to put their hand on that wall where he'd been. See that number right there? I picked that cotton. That's what... He wanted his boys to understand where they've come from. You hear me? Not so that they would look back with longing. But so they could know. You know, I, 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 could, I could get political and I could talk about a country that would enable somebody to come from that 
to a, driving a Mercedes Benz. But that's not where this is going today. That, that someone who, 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 who just continued to walk out their life knowing and hoping there's something better out in front of me. I'm talking about folks, we've been talking the last couple of weeks that God is a God of restoration. He has come everywhere you look. God, when He shows up, He comes to restore what the enemy has done to His people. God gets very angry when the devil comes in and starts jacking with you and your kids. He gets very angry when hell comes and messes with your health. God does not stand by silent all through Scripture. I, 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 I think I read through some of them last week just as y'all were tearing up the service. Here's what, I didn't stop and say it, but last week when y'all were doing that, 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 that deal, and, and I mean, it was so awesome to see the people of God praying and, and God moving. And, and, and the Lord had me reading those scriptures and I saw it as like, like I, I don't know, y'all probably don't, n- nobody in here but me watches these, these uh, you know, uh, military flicks. But, you know, the snipers, they're, they're called overwatch. They're, they're over there shooting the enemy as the, as the rest of the team is going in and, and, and run the operation. The sniper is protecting them. And I could see myself reading those scriptures over y'all as, as y'all were being prayed for. And it was like, it, I heard the, literally heard the word overwatch. That I was decreeing and declaring things over you and over this church while God was doing what he was doing. And so you know, the whole thing we were reading and talking about that God is a God of restoration. In Joel, he says, I'm going to restore. Amen. In Acts chapter 3, 19. Put Acts 3, 19 up on that board if y'all can. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. It says, Peter's preaching his message and he says, you know, uh, this is what happened, and, and you know, that if you will repent, God will send times of refreshing. Say refreshing. That refreshing comes after repentance. Let me see. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. That God wants to restore you. He wants to refresh you. He wants to give you back what the enemy has illegally taken from you. Now, it's illegal from his vantage point, but from our vantage point, sometimes we, by our, our, be careful, ignorance, that's a very good word. We, by our ignorance, have opened the door. I wasn't thinking ignorance. I was thinking something worse. (laughs) We have opened the door and allowed the enemy, given him right, to come into our lives. Listen, that is not the Father's will for your life. You can never have the faith of Abraham if you think that it is God's will to destroy you, to to, to depress you, to bring these evil upon your obedient children. God does not do that. Now, I see God pulling back his hand and letting the enemies of Israel come in. It doesn't happen to his obedient kids. When Israel's walking with God, their enemies run in terror. Guess what? When you walk... In obedience to God, you're 10 foot tall and bulletproof. I'm telling you, you are a superhero. You just don't have the cape. Well, maybe you have the cape at home. If you do, I don't want to know about it, but I'm just saying. (laughs) Sorry. You are God's voice, His people upon the earth. Listen, how are we going to affect this community out here if we walk around broke, broken and busted all day long? God wants to per, put, to put something in you. And I, as the pastor of this house, I want to see you bold and as a lion, righteous. Amen. When the, when the devil comes in and points a finger at you, I want you to be able to say what Jesus said. You ain't got no claim on my life. My life is hidden with Christ in God. Got nothing on me. God is a God of restoration. He wants to send times of refreshing. But repentance has to precede that. It's why we started this morning, and I ask you guys to come up here and continue the flow, that, that folks, when we get out of here today, there is going to be a download into your spirit. 
that you'll know that God has every intention and he's in the process of, of restoring to you health. How many times has the, the Lord healed your body? Many times since I've been here. Six times the devil's tried to kill you with cancer and six times God's come back and said, I hear, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Amen? But here's the deal, guys. And, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be nice, I promise. But you cannot be a spiritually lazy person and walk in this kind of victory. You, 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 can't, you, can't, just, you can't just kind of slough this thing off. God wants you to get to, to bear down, to get serious. Look, I've lost hundreds of pounds in the last two or three years. What are you, what are you talking? I'm in shape, round as a shape. And I'm going to be honest. I'm not disciplined like some folks I know. Yeah, yeah Kedrick. Can't even get his arms around a guitar. Discipline is a difficult task. But when we read here in the book of Hebrews, you know, how, how did Abraham and, and these guys, how did they get to the point to where they just simply trusted God all the way? Folks, it's because they realized it. Salome said it uh, a, a year or two ago. We were back there in the school of ministry one Thursday night, and this thing's bugging me to death. And, and, and we, were, we were asking and talking about the question about why does it seem that God heals some people and, 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 you know, and some people don't. Why do we see miracles in third world countries that we don't see here in the, in, in the States? And Salome nailed it. She said, she said, because in Africa you don't have any other choice. You've got no place else to go. It, it's God or, or the grave. Hello? And friend, it's the, the, the deal is the American church has become so, so enamored with everything else that we don't have anything in our life almost where we say it's God or the grave. There, there's almost nothing in, in the American church where we, where, where we say, you know, I, I, I got nowhere else to go. Pastor gets on your case, bring a little discipline in your life, and but baby, you just go down the street somewhere else. Guess what? You're never going to grow. You, you, you're going to become spiritually impotent because you won't endure hardness and you won't endure discipline and you won't let anybody speak into your life. We got people, I, I love their in and out because they just, they, they just, you know, they know they're right and everybody else is wrong. Okay. You know, I, I mean really, look guys, you know, we, we don't choose those that God puts in authority. He does, he does that. And, and I didn't choose to be here, but I am. Would y'all get it right? <laughs> Just get it right. Then I can retire. <laughs> Hello? Because, because God will continue. You look, how many times did, did Israel walk around the same mountain again and again and again and again lord have mercy i'm not the sharpest crayon in the box but when i see something the third time i stop and say okay god please come sit down and tell me what i've got to do i'm tired of this scenery yeah i'm talking i'm, I'm preaching better than you're shouting that's all right they Abraham and these guys had such a grip on the fact that they've got nowhere else to turn. I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to finish this story. The, the fa this father that, that drove that Mercedes, his history told him that life was hard. And so he brought those kids to our house, took them out to that old garage, had them run their fingers across the marks on the wall of that garage where they had counted up the sacks of cotton. 
that a little six-year-old boy and his parents had picked up for the day. He wanted them to understand where they had come from so that they would not forget. Not forget how blessed they are to live in such a nation that allows the poor to rise. Not forget how blessed they are to, 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 to have a father that knows what hard work is, but also knows that at the end of the day, there is a reward coming. Come on, there's so many spiritual applications we could talk about. These all died in faith, verse, eight, verse 13 says. Faith is not faith until it's been tested. How many of you heard that? It, 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 that, that 13th verse has always disturbed me. Has that ever, does that disturb you? Read it. These all died in faith, not having received the promises. I don't like to read that part. Can I, can I talk to you? If what you're believing God for does not come out the way you're, you're asking, is He still God? Does He still deserve and warrant your trust and your praise and your faithfulness? How many times have I talked to people that have said, I, I just have a hard time trusting God. You know, I just feel like he let me down. Welcome to the parade, sister, brother. We've all been there. But if you're really honest about who you are and what you're after, you'll get to the point again where you'll be able to say, Lord, I trust you. I trust you again. How many of you in here, you've been through spots where it was hard to trust him? Hold, you, hold those hands up. I want everybody, if that's you, I want you to hold your hand up and leave it up until I tell you to put it down. You have had a hard time trusting God in spots. Now, only those who have found that God was faithful anyway. Put your hands down. Okay, most of you. Some went down a little slower than others. You're the ones I'm preaching to. You can trust this God. I said you can trust him. Amen. These all died in faith. Not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off. And they were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. They're saying this world is not my home. And that's the problem. Everybody's, you know... On these, on these pastors' forums, I read, everybody's going on and on and on about, you know, what are we going to do about, about New York and the abortion thing that them and other, other states or cities are trying to pass? And, uh, folks, the, the, the world is doing what the world does. The devil's come to steal, kill, and to destroy. When, Everybody knew it a, a year, two years ago, whenever it was. When did they erect that statue to Baal? When was that? Yeah, huh? Which, uh, yeah. Well, they, uh, it, was, it was here like within the last year or two. Or, or two they literally erected a, a, a statue of the devil. And, 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 and it's like, you know, it... All blood is sacred to God. You do it. The life is in the blood. All blood is sacred to God. Ralphina Dotson preached it harder than anybody I've ever heard. I'm going to preach it to you just like she says it. All blood is sacred to God. And, and, and if it's not offered on an altar to God, then it's offered on an altar to the devil, to Satan. And the blood of these millions and millions of aborted babies are being offered on a satanic altar. I could go on and I could hammer a lot of us in here, you know, piercings and tattoos, and I, I, but I don't want to get into all that. But I'm just saying, folks, we've got to be very careful about what, how much of this culture we allow into our lives. Be because this blood is being offered on an altar to Satan. And I said earlier, he is, uh, him and his, and his purposes are being energized 
Because of the blood, that this innocent blood that is being shed. Friends, that's no different than Israel walking through a land of pagans and idol worshipers. As long as they kept their eyes on God, everything's going to be all right. Judgment is going to come to this nation because of what we have ensconced in our laws. Judgment is, a, I, I, it's amazing to me, it may happen while we're alive, I don't know. But, but, but you see, that, that, that the, the judgment that fell on Nineveh, was, God said it's coming. Uh, 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 what's his name? Jonah preaches, they all repent. And it's like, you know, Jonah's like, that's why I didn't, I didn't want to go tell them you were going to do it. Because I knew if, God, if they repented, you wouldn't, you wouldn't kill them. And Jonah wanted them dead. Jonah's the man after my heart. <laughs> kill them all, let God sort them out. <laughs> Seriously. People look at me like I'm some kind of redneck preacher. Read this book. It's just natural. I, I mean, the Ninevites were some of the most carried on the most atro uh, atro war atrocities, whatever the word I'm looking for, they, were, uh, they would take the little babies of their, of their enemies and bash them. And on the, it, they were horrible, just terrible war crimes, war criminals. That's the word I was looking for. And, and, and Jonah didn't want them spared. They don't deserve your grace. God, they don't deserve your mercy. <laughs> Neither do we. No, it's not Jonah's choice, and it's not our choice. God loved me anyway. So he preaches, they repent, but guess what? That repentance was short-lived, and a hundred years later, that city was destroyed. You hear me? God, God's, back, God's equation always works out. And it's not your job or my job to figure out when he's going to, he's going to bring judgment on a nation or not. I, I fully expect judgment. You know, we, we, we had the Twin Towers go down and, and the very people that were saying they had voted God out of their platform, they, didn't want, they wouldn't let people preach or pray in Jesus' name. Oh, now it's all, oh, we pray. We have pray for New York. All the prayers, yeah, 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 yeah. And then as you know, soon as the, the new wore off, now they're over here doing what they're doing. I'm telling you, folks, God, God's judgment is coming on them. Our job is not to wish judgment on them. Our job is to preach the gospel in hopes that they repent and they return and times of refreshing come for them as for us. My, my concern is not what's going on in New York. My concern is what is going on right here in this church. What's going on in my family? Am, do, am I doing things that is attracting the attention of God or the judgment of God on me? Because if I'll get my life right, this church will get right. And if this church gets right, guess what? This community is going to get right. And if this community gets right, guess what? This region is going to experience a visitation from heaven. And when this region experiences a visitation from heaven, the whole state is going to begin to realize and throb with the presence of God. And when this state gets right, all hell is going to come against it, going to resist it, going to fight. Listen to me. Going to fight it. But we're just going to keep going. We're going to keep trusting. Though he slay me, yet I'm going to trust him. That's what we see in Abraham's life. And the writer of Hebrews says, because he wasn't mindful of where he came, but he was looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. Acts 3.19 Repentance will bring times of refreshing. My message today, now I'll give you my title. <laughs> Restoration that comes by faith. We're going to have to trust Him. We're going to have to believe God. In this dark day, we're going to have to believe God is still God. We're going to have to repent. We're going to have to shut the door in our lives that has allowed the devil free reign to come in to our homes, to our children, to our churches, and to our communities. We shut the door and we say, devil, no more. For me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That's all it takes. Somebody just draw a circle, say, you know what? 
I may be going to a church that is dead and dry as a shuck, but I am going to, I'm going to, I don't have to be, I don't have to reflect them. I'm going to reflect him. Amen. You're, you're, you're going to be the live wire when everything else is dead. All right. Well, that's not all I was going to preach, but God had something different. I love it. I love it. I know God talked to somebody here today. Amen. Why don't y'all figure out something to play up there, if you will. Hmm. Thank you. Why don't you just stand to your feet this morning. I thank you for, for being here. I thank you for showing up with an expectancy. But right now, I just want you to stir your heart up and your expectation. It's early. I hadn't quit this early in a long time. But I, want, I, 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 I quit deliberately early because, friends, if this was just a sermon, then you go and leave, go back there, we're going to eat together, we're going to have a good time, we're going to support this, uh, this mission trip that many of y'all are about to embark on to Africa. That's all there is to it, but folks, there's more to it than that. I truly, 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 look, look at me just a minute. Look at me just a minute. I really believe, I honestly believe this with every fiber in my being, that if we will give God what he's asking for here today, our faith, our trust, our hope, we won't just treat this like another, another day. Listen, some of you, hell has come into your families because you have opened a door. God's asking you by repentance, you can shut that door. Shut the door. Be done with it. Be done with it. Amen? Just, 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 just be done with, with, with playing with hell. Be done with a half-hearted commitment to Christ. Be done with it. Yeah. Would you, would you share, share that? Just share that. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship just a yes. second before I do this. Yes. Woo, come on, church. I believe that fan in his hand is articulating this morning. Come on, people. I told Pastor, I said, this has been going through my heart the whole service. I, I don't sing good, but it, it goes, Jesus, use me, and oh, Lord, don't refuse me. Surely there's a work that I can do. Mm. And even though it's humble, Lord, teach my will to crumble. Yeah. Surely there's a work that I can do. Yeah. Amen. Would you all sing that one time or two times this morning? Would you all do that? Yeah. Jesus, Jesus use me, and oh Lord, Lord don't refuse me. Surely there's a work that I can do. And even though it's humble, help my will to crumble. Though the cost be great, I'll work for you. Oh, yes. Jesus, use me. Oh Lord, don't refuse me. Surely there's a work that I can do. Even though it's humble, help my will to crumble. Though the cost be great, I'll work for you. I think that's what he's trying to tell us today. Each one of us, his pastor has been preaching last year, this year, all the time that God has called him here. We need to rise up, amen, once again, put our hands on that plow and allow that great ghost of heaven to pull us and to, and to plow that row, amen, yes, that yes, God yes. might put seed in it and there might be a crop and a growth yes. in the communities that we live in. Mm. God help me, God help me. I, I've been convicted the whole time that man of God preached. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to tell you something. That man of God preached this morning. Come on, church. Thank you, Jesus. And I, and I pray back there that my heart would be good ground, that that incorruptible seed that, he, that came forth through that mouthpiece uh, might find germination and a growth in my heart in my life. Come yes, on, folks. Yes, yes, yes. 
Oh, my God, mm. use us, Jesus. Use Amen. us, Jesus. Amen. Don't refuse us. Yes. We Jesus. love you, Lord. Yes, we love we each do. other. Come on, Yes, folk. we do, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank, thank, you, thank, Jesus. You, Jesus. thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My God, my God, my God. Brother Brad preached on humility in the, in the Sunday school class. It's not something self-induced. It's a humility that only the Spirit of God can give us. Esteeming others. <laughs> More than ourselves. Can somebody shout amen or oh me? <laughs> oh my God, we love you. See, that, 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 that's why we're going to make it, church, because that love of God is in this house. We have love for Jesus. He has love for us, but thank God we have love for each other. Yes. That's the culminating factor. Come on, that yes. devil can't yes. find no place in the crack, amen, if that love is here. Oh, yes. When yes. we truly love each other. Thank you, Lord. And thank I love you. you, and I love my man of God, my pastor. <laughs> I love you, and just bless your hearts. We're going to go eat a bite. <laughs> Not till we're done praying. And I love you, man of God. Would you bow your heads with us this morning? Father, we feel your presence here. Lord, you didn't come here just to stir up emotion. Lord, you came here to change hearts and to change lives. So, Lord, I pray for that one that's here. Maybe there's somebody here that doesn't know you. They're, they're not saved. Holy Spirit, you're stirring their hearts right now. We all feel it. We feel your presence. We know you're working. And Lord, you're working to try to change us. So Lord, we just, we just agree with heaven this morning. We say, Lord, I want to change. Change me. Mold me. Make me. There is that upward call of Christ. Lord, you're calling us to become more and more and more and more and more like you. Lord, we just want to surrender, Lord, our will to your will. That's that song. <laughs> Even though it's humble, help my will to crumble. Though the cost be great, Lord, I'll do what you called me to do. I'll work for you. Lord, and if it means just standing, I'll just stand for you. Oh, you're so good. Every head bowed and eye closed, no one looking around. If you're here today, say, Pastor, you've been, God's been talking to me today. I want to give him more of my life right now. Just lift your hand. Is that, has the Holy Spirit been dealing with you? Just, just raise that hand and say, I hear you, Lord. I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, would you, do, would you just lead us out? If God's dealing with you, then please come around this altar. Just come on up here and start praying. Just find a place. Make it, make it real. Make it real. Make it permanent. Make it permanent. Oh, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As these are coming to pray, I want to talk to the rest of you. We prayed this morning. God, I want every, every soul in this house to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Listen, you can't do God's work without God's power. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. You need to be filled with the life of God. So if that's you, if, if, if you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit today, just lift your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. I, I'm not full of God. I'm full of something, but it's not God. And I need Him to fill me today. Is that you? Just lift your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. If that's you, just come on up here. I want to pray with you. Pastor, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and start that music. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. We're going to spend time in here praying. I know that the, that the folks have got the food ready back there. I'm going to pray over that food. and y'all, if, if you're through praying, but listen. That food back there is not as important as what God's going to give you here. And I do want to give you a warning. One day you're going to stand before this God. And the way sometimes we flippantly cast off a prophetic word that's been released into our hearts and lives. You're going to, you're, you're, you're going to be judged by that word one day. You hear? You better learn to respect Him. You better learn to honor His presence. Because there's going to come a day you're going, to, you're going to find out God's not playing. Hell is real. And it's forever. Father, Lord, I thank You. You've been talking to lives here today. Lord, some that dead things are coming to life. Some, some things that are alive in us have got to die. Everywhere there's flesh, everywhere there's selfishness, everywhere there's offense. Lord, you've been confronting that all morning. 
Holy Spirit, I thank you for dealing with me and my sin. Lord, you began talking to me about that last night, driving home. I said, Brad, you, the Lord told me, Brad, you can never, never preach this until you get it in your own life first. Father, I repented and I ask you, come, come in. Lord, I've been obedient and I've done what you've told me to do. And Lord, I know that this, this, this service is going to be written in the book of God. And Lord, one day those books are going to be opened. And we're going to be judged by what you've done here today. Oh, Lord, let me say yes to your will and no to mine. It's my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Father, bless this food we're going to eat today and Lord, just, just I thank you for funding the kingdom work that's going out of this house. You're an awesome God. We love you and praise you and bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're praying.